to Elbow and I have my headphones, it doesn't seem to do that, so... Okay, that was not what I was going to talk about. So we were talking about if you're not mad right now, then you're kind of unaware of what's going on. Because, here's the thing, the government is just playing around with us, they're playing with our lives. And I've been seeing these new things, um, like... <laughs> The study they're saying that more people now are dying at home during this coronavirus, and which is what I was saying. Probably, you know, other things are happening, like people are committing suicide and things like that. But I looked at the article, and the article just says more people are dying at home due to the coronavirus. Like, that's just what the article says, okay? But so you would think people were dying at home because of the coronavirus. But that's not what they were saying. They're just saying, oh, more people are dying at home now. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, they just put these headlines to make everyone think things. But when you read the articles, the articles don't really say anything. They don't. They're just kind of. Um, but everyone will focus on these headlines. And that's what's going on with this coronavirus. And people look at the big numbers. They say, oh, one, one million something people affected. Affected. That means they got the flu. That means a million people got the flu in the world. That does not mean they all died. In fact, the majority of them are surviving. Uh, it is not a deadly virus. People are recovering. And guess what I heard today? The governor of California is starting to plan to open everything back up in California. So this virus is not all that deadly, y'all. California is opening back up today. They are starting to open back up. He's lifting the restrictions that he put on California, the governor of California. Now, they say Governor Sislak is still sticking to his thing, but we're hoping he'll start to follow suit with the governor of California. Because as we've said before, this is obviously a political stunt. And those two are both Democrats, so I'm sure he'll follow suit with his little cronies over there. But if he doesn't, well, I don't know what is Steve Sislak's problem. And I don't know what's going to be his excuse to keep Vegas closed if California is reopening. And across the world, they're now um, in recovery uh, things. Like, they're starting, they've fully recovered in China. They're totally back to normal. But Nevada, we're not supposed to even open till May 1st. California is opening today. So Governor Sislak. Why is Nevada still closed? We need Nevada back open. It makes no sense. There's a virus that people are recovering from. It's a regular flu virus, y'all. Regular flu virus. Less people have died than what usually die from the flu virus every year with this coronavirus. Less. Less. Did you hear that word? L-E-S-S. -S. Not like the newscaster over here, <laughs> weather guy Les, <laughs> hell yes, we got, we got a weather guy here named Les. Less people are dying than the regular flu that comes around every single year, okay? That would mean the coronavirus is less severe than the regular flu that we get every year. So what that also means is we just stopped all the economies in the world, and especially the United States, for a flu virus that is less severe than what we got last year for the flu and every other year for the flu since they've been documenting. So, if you're not mad right now, then you are not aware what's going on. Our government is messing with us big time and they don't care. Because all they care about is getting who they want in office, and it's usually themselves or their friend. And they are willing to risk all of our lives in the process. And they said... They were trying to look out for us. Really? From a flu virus that y'all just exaggerated and shut down all the economies? And guess what other news I heard today from the lovely Las Vegans here? 
So Vegas is a very interesting place. It's wonderful to live, but the majority of people that you meet that are born in Vegas are a bunch of fucking weirdos and assholes. And if you're born in Vegas, it might not be you that I'm talking about. I'm not saying everyone, but I have met a lot of people that were born here that are just nasty. And some of them that come here, same thing. They get this bad attitude when they come to Vegas. They might not even be born here, but they get this nasty attitude that um, everything is just about the money here. Uh, they they think tourists don't matter. Just take from them. Just rob from the tourists. Just gouge the tourists. Just scam the tourists. Do this and that. And then the tourists are going to keep returning? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how that works now. Okay, see how long it takes the tourists to come back after y'all didn't treat them good in the first place. So, there's a lot of people here with this nasty mentality, real greedy, real just gimme, 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 gimme. Uh, Vegas is all about, you know, more, 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 more. And people that would not very much intelligence or any sort of education. I don't mean going to college even. I just mean educated in life. Like you just have like more knowledge than just how to fucking brush your hair and take a shower um, and write oh, an article once in a while. I mean, some of these people, you're like, how are you where you're at, you know? But in Vegas, sometimes we cater to the retards here, and it's like the lowest common denominator here. And, uh, you know, this has kind of sometimes been the place where we take the rejects that were, it's their last, you know, they used to say artists come here to die, you know? And... That seems to be the case with some of the people that come here, too, that they just, you know, it didn't work out anywhere else. They wouldn't have done well in a, in a, a good city or like not a good city. I mean, like a big city that, you know, like one like New York or California where the, the San Francisco, you know, the really they would be eaten alive. But here they're like the kings, you know, so we have a lot of people here in Vegas. Well, guess what I heard today that just put a fire up my ass. We have our health care workers the heroes, the ones we're supposed to call heroes for doing their jobs, are now complaining that other people are getting unemployment. They're saying, how come they get unemployment when we have to work? When they have to work, please let us work. Please let us work. Are you kidding me? Everyone wants their job right now, and you all are bitching because you have a job and because you're working overtime and getting paid overtime and getting your ass licked by the entire world right now, saying, oh, healthcare providers are so fucking wonderful because they're doing their fucking job and they actually have a job, and now they're bitching about it. And they're saying, why do they get to sit at home and not work? Are you fucking kidding me? We want to work. Open Nevada, we want to work, you fucking morons. Holy shit, are you ungrateful shits. You have a job. And you're getting overtime. And now you're going to complain? And they said, our lives are at risk. You're a healthcare provider and this is a normal flu virus coming through. I think you can handle it. Are you kidding me? And we're supposed to say thank you to these people that aren't even thankful that they have a job? Get the fuck out of here. I will not thank any fucking health worker. You're doing your job and you have a job. You're not risking your life any more than you do every day if you work in a hospital. I'll thank them as much as I do on a normal basis, not anymore. They are, they are the ones that are luckiest. My dad is in the healthcare profession. He's an x-ray tech, and he's stoked. They're getting extra money and funding and all kinds of stuff for the hospital. And, oh, wow, we're all getting overtime and extra pay. And, man, he's stoked. He don't give a shit if there's a virus. He deals with that every time they go to the hospital. My dad got so sick one time because someone coughed right in his face. And went right in there. And it was all, like, just everything. The guy was super sick. And another time he was in surgery and the guy had AIDS. And the blood got all over all of them. Those are the risks you so take you when you're a health care provider. So know if this is a podcast. A podcast? Well, a podcast is... A podcast thing. You guys realize that? Podcast is the app. 
So anything could be a podcast, but there's also, those are podcasts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, I'm not on podcasts, so you could call this a podcast. The issue is, I think the issue is we're talking about the, 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 the millennials and the boomers. The millennials were raised by the most selfish generation. Yeah, okay, my dad's... The millennials are very selfish. Yes. Someone just kind of commented that teenagers today are very selfish. Well, well, the teenagers are selfish because they were raised by extremely selfish parents. My dad's generation, the uh, me generation, they call it the me generation, right, Jared? Jared, aren't they called the me generation? Whatever. Is the me gen? I think it is. Jedi Rich! Yo! Is my dad's gen called the me generation? Yeah, well, they call the boomers. But, yeah. but isn't it that they, yeah, they the me them. gen? Yeah, they, they call them the me. Well, the boomers, but the me generation was their um, the nickname they got because they're so greedy. They're all about themselves. They're the reason that we're in so much debt because all they cared about was getting what they wanted, and they don't really care about their Someone children all that much. Would make a really good face mask for for the. You know what? I have a part that I could put on my face. No, you tell them that you. Yeah. I cut these. You made those. I made them. So I have the rest. They were leggings. So yesterday I went to Walmart, y'all, and um, they had stuff on sale for a dollar. And they had these leggings. And I was like, well, it's going to get hot here, but a dollar? Shoot, I better get them. So I got two pairs, these ones and the, the checkered ones I was wearing yesterday. And then I got home and I was like, man, I ain't going to wear leggings. What am I going to do with these? And then I was like, got this genius idea to cut them. So Greg's a healthcare worker, and he, he's saying, look, <sighs> I'm risking my life every single day, and I'm not getting paid shit. <laughs> How are you not getting paid? Well, he says he's not getting, I mean, the money that he's not making, and he wants more money. Well, you're getting paid your salary and probably overtime, well, right? But he's saying that that is... The, the no, then I'm sorry. What is your name? What is Greg, his name? Greg. Greg, I'm sorry, Greg, then you're just being greedy. Because most of us don't even have jobs right now, and you're not risking your life any more than you ever do because this is a normal flu virus, and now we're going back to normal, like California. So that proves this is a normal flu virus. Less people have died, so I'm sorry, Greg, but you're not risking your life any more than you ever do at the hospital. So you should be making what you make and your overtime. I'm sorry, if you think that's unfair, then you are greedy. Because most of us don't even have jobs. And unemployment, if people get that, which we don't hear, I don't get unemployment, so we are really struggling. But people that get unemployment, that's usually half of what they normally make. So that is not what most people can live on. So Greg, you should be very fortunate you have a job and you are not risking your life because this is a normal flu virus. Everyone risks their life when they work in the health department every day. And most things are a lot more severe than this. This has only been blown out of proportion. If you're in the healthcare field, you know that if you are not following all of the hype, when you're actually seeing how many people are actually dying in your hospital from the coronavirus for real, and that are not just old people that were already on their deathbed. Now, uh, there's a guy who says that, hey, he, he says he knows a 60, can say what you're saying, 65-year-old worker, he said he doesn't follow any of them protocols, do, do none of it. And he's fine, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you. So I'm sorry. I'm not. I appreciate what you guys are doing. Please let. Okay, please. Please let you all know. I appreciate what you healthcare workers do every single day. Okay. So please don't think I am saying this. What I'm saying is the fact that people are acting like y'all are doing way above and beyond when really you guys are doing your jobs, which you should be thankful you have jobs since the majority of us don't. Does that make sense? Even if you're working more hours, you should feel very fortunate because the majority of people would love to be able to go back to work. It is not fun sitting at home when you don't know when your next check is coming in, if ever. That is not a fun feeling at all. There is no enjoyment there. It's not a party. It's not a celebration. It's scary. So it is not like, woo, let's party. We get a month off of work. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to pay any bill. I've had to contact everyone I know. I've had to um, scrounge every penny. I've had to sell things. I've had to, you know, move uh, things around. With some people are having to, you know, a lot of their funds are probably having to cash out anything. If you had any kind of funds, um, we don't have that kind of stuff. So we ended up just pawning things. Uh, we have a, quite a few things um, in Hawk right now that uh, we have pawn loans out that come up 
like the three months are coming up soon where uh, you can extend them again, but you know, you get like a three months and then they want you to pay or you, we wanted to pay them off after a month, but that didn't happen. But that's what we have to do here. We have some equipment that we might have to uh, put in hockey, but the more you get in hockey, it's sort of bad. So right now we have, um, we have like three things there and that's what we have to do. And then um, some people have been bought videos from us and uh, I have been working, but very minimal since they closed all of the hotels in Las Vegas. So I'm only able to see locals. Um, now, If you have a job right now, you should feel very fortunate. I know it's tough because you're probably tired. You're probably working your ass off. And for that, we are all thankful. So I'm saying thank you for working your ass off. But if you then turn around and say, it's unfair that I'm working my ass off when other people are sitting at home, then that's where you're wrong. Because all of us, I would say, okay, 99.9% .9 would trade places with you, honestly because they want a job, even if it was where they thought it was risking their lives. Most people right now would choose to go to work if they could, because it is not fun watching your finances dwindle to nothing and you don't know when the next paycheck is coming. And even if you're getting, let's say, unemployment, those checks are so much less than you're used to. So you're probably already freaking out about that. Even if you're getting the uh, extra funding from the government, that's still not enough for what most people have lost during this time they were out of work. And most small businesses are going to close. So if you have a job, if you work in the military, cops, a dent, or not dental, a dental's closed, I think, medical field, all these things, you should feel really fortunate, and that's why I get angry when I hear people saying things like, that's not fair that they're getting unemployment and get to sit at home. Are you kidding me? No one wants to sit at home right now. No one is happy about this. This quarantine thing is not fun. It is not. Even if people are making fun videos, they're doing that because they're trying to do anything to not get depressed. It's not like the people think the fun videos are because people are just having the time of their lives. The fun videos are to help avoid getting depressed. It's like, let's do something because we're so bored. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. We got the kids. Oh, kids don't get to go to school. Kids will be thankful for school now. You'll be surprised. Some, some not always, but some will be like, man, I want to go back to school and see my friends. You know, I'm so tired of being at home. I want to kill my parents and my friends and siblings. You know, everyone's probably at each other's throats. Not literally kill. You know what I mean? Everyone's at each other's throats of the last month. So. Please, please, please do not complain if you have a job right now. It really just is a slap in the face to everyone that doesn't have one. And you think it's like where we are happy we don't have work? No, 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 no. For one thing, most people enjoy working. Even if they bitch about working, you feel a sense of pride of going and doing something. No one feels that good if all you did was be a couch potato all day. You know what I mean? Most people are like, man, all I did was watch Friends and Judge Judy all day and... I ate, and man, oh man, I maybe walked about down the block, how many calories did I, <laughs> and as you watch your ass grow and you get more tired and more depressed, most people were like, please, let me get back to work, let me get back to the gym, let me get back to my life, let me get back to school, let me, I mean, people are wanting to go back to their lives, so when people that have their lives right now, like when you still have your job, your life is still pretty much the same, you're just working probably more, because most people with jobs, their job isn't been increased, like if you're a delivery driver, there are more deliveries, if you're a healthcare worker, there's probably more people in the hospital, so I get that, it's very, a lot of hours, I get healthcare workers work a lot of hours, I know this, my whole family is in healthcare, so believe me, I know, and I'm not, uh, you guys do wonderful things, you save lives every day, believe me, that is how I feel, what I'm saying is I got very upset when someone were to say, that's not fair that you all get money when we have to work for our money. We want to work for our money. Do you not understand? This was not people's choice. People did not want this quarantine thing. This is a, except for people that are obviously doing it for a political thing. 
They did obviously want this because they took a normal flu virus and are exaggerating to the stream. And now we can see for sure because California is already going back to norm. Just came out today. Today, they start reopening everything. So that would mean we're over this flu virus already, over the hump, which would mean it's less severe than the normal flu virus or just about right in line, probably come about right in line with the normal flu virus for the numbers. So we stopped all this. People have lost their jobs. People have lost maybe their homes even at the end of this. I don't know. I don't know how strapped people are. But some people, I'm sure, were so strapped that a month can make you lose everything. So that upsets me. That really upsets me, and that should upset you all. And that's why this is titled, If You're Not Upset, Then You Don't Know What's Going On. You know, you are unaware because you should be really mad right now that they stopped everything for a flu virus. And you say, oh, they didn't know. They did know. Because for one thing, Governor Sisolak, the governor here in Nevada, allowed construction to continue during the whole process. So if he knew it was a deadly, deadly virus that could spread so easily that we shut down everything, he would have shut down construction. Because construction in no way was that essential. Construction is not healthcare workers. Construction is not delivery drivers to us. You know, I mean, construction is not a grocery store. Construction could have waited a month. Any project could have waited a month, including the Raiders Stadium. But they knew the Raiders Stadium could not finish in time if it waited a month because Raiders Stadium is already behind. They are way behind. Um, like, I mean, they're probably going to finish on time, but what I'm saying is they've been behind, so they cannot lose any more time. Does that make some people, oh, they're not behind, they're finishing on time. Yeah, they're going to finish on time since they didn't close during the coronavirus, but they've been behind, so they can't lose any more days. You get what I'm saying? They're only going to finish on time if nothing else goes wrong, which everything has been going wrong for them, but so they could not afford to lose 45 days, what are we, 28 days today. We'll see if Governor Sislik removes this for Nevada. I we're really hoping he follows suit of California. He should. Because if he doesn't, then it really makes no sense. Then you know there's no reason. Because California is saying we're safe. Let's take off all the restrictions, open everything up. So why would Nevada not follow? I mean, just at why? Why would we not? So... If we don't, then I don't know what Governor Sisolak is thinking or who he's trying to press, impress at that point because he just lost his damn mind then if he doesn't. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. I'm continually amazed the last month. I never thought any of these things would happen in my lifetime, if ever. Shutting down, like, all these things. It is the weirdest thing when you go out there. I was on the bus yesterday, and it's just weird when you look. Like, everything's closed, you know? Like, just building after building. So, like, Ghost Town of May is so weird. And we've just adapted to that. Like, it's nothing now. Because it's been, like, like people are like, yeah, don't think it. Like, this is so weird. Just posted things, and, you know. By directive of the governor, we are closed temporarily. I'm like, this is just freaking weird. If this doesn't feel like some kind of Nazism thing, you know, where you're just like, what is going on with the government? I mean, so much control now. I didn't realize the government could control our lives this much. And they can by doing stuff like this, but only because we let them. They actually can't if we didn't let them. But everyone signs up for this BS. Like, I was shocked. I went to Walmart and, <coughs> excuse me, I got tickled by the, let me do that again, hold on. <coughs> so I'm still clearing out some of the stuff, as you guys know from my bulimia. So when I cough, I get, oh, it's very helpful. I'm getting this stuff out of there. I'm not sick, except for, like, from being sick for years, but I'm not, like, sick, like, anything more than my bulimia. Anyway, so I'm at Walmart and 
You know, they have this new six feet apart thing. It's just so weird. They make you go around these little mazes, too, to get in the store. I was going up to the thing. There was, like, cops there and the security. It's like, what? This is so weird. This has become such a militaristic kind of thing. It's so weird. So they're like, oh, no, you got to walk around this maze. I'm like, why? There's no one. No one here. I was gonna go in the one, and they're like, they they had it where I could have walked in. But they're like, no, you gotta walk all the way around that maze. I was like, okay. So we go around the maze, go to the store, and I do my thing. Then when we leave, now they want to check everyone's receipts, which they usually do at Walmart, kinda. You know, they kind of casually do, but they kind of do just some people. But now they got us in a line where you can't leave the store, and you have to be six feet apart from everyone as you're leaving the store. That took forever to get out of the darn store as the girl's checking everyone's receipts. And I'm like, you know what? We just came from the self-checkout. You can see we paid. Like, this is becoming ridiculous. And everyone's just signing up because they're just like, oh, it's for the coronavirus. So I'm like, you're giving away all your rights. We are paying customers that they can see we just paid. They don't need to then nanny nanny us and have a six feet apart and take half hour to get out of the store because we're going to check everyone's receipts when we just paid. You could see it was the same people came. We came from the self-checkout in a line as we now check all of our receipts. How do we get away from the self-checkout machine if we didn't pay? The thing is a censored weight thing. You know, I mean, the, the darn thing you can see if you didn't. Yeah, and the uh, ladies watching you the whole time, too, and they got cameras on them, self-checkouts. So it's like, and then, now it takes a half hour to get out of the store. And I'm like, oh, it's coronavirus. It's all right. I'm like, this is absolutely ludicrous. We're just signing up to give away all of our rights. We don't have to do that. Why do we do this? I mean, it was like, oh, we had to. For a regular flu virus? And people putting on the stuff themselves, wearing masks and doing all this nonsense. And I get some people legally had to, for their businesses, do certain things. But I'm saying, uh, as individuals, where we're like, oh, I'm going to put on a mask. All that does is just continue the hysteria. Because more people that see masks freak out. You know what I mean? So the more people that see, and people are pigeons. They want to, have you guys ever seen pigeons? Man, if one thing, one pigeon... Goes to do something. Here comes the whole flock. They want to see what they're checking out. Oh, you got food? Oh, man, I got to come see. You got to watch me. All you got to get is one pigeon to see the food, and then you got the whole herd because all of them will follow. Um, and that's what we do, too. Uh, but I don't, as you all see. <laughs> I sure do not follow the norm. I go against the current all the time. Man, that's why I get account after account taken down. I got my account taken down for telling Governor Sisley to go kill himself. <laughs> I don't regret it. That fucker. Man, this guy destroyed our life. I think I can go tell him. I'm not saying anyone should kill him, and I'm not saying he really should. I'm just saying for what he did, he should feel like killing himself. If he doesn't, then he's an asshole because he didn't mind destroying all of our lives. And you say, oh, what's for the right? No, because he allowed construction the whole time. So that makes me know the whole thing was political. He was just doing it for political reasons, whatever those may be. Maybe it's just to make sure you look like the governor that did the most during the coronavirus. You know, oh, I took the most precautions during the coronavirus. So the healthcare worker wants to know, okay, let's, switch, let's talk business. Mm -hmm. What should we invest in now? What's the best stocks to buy? I would say what's real cheap right now is buy some Vegas stocks because those will eventually go up. You guys know how Vegas uh, will recover, but it'll be a minute, so you make sure you're willing to sit on those for a second. But, yeah, I think Vegas is going to be really cheap right now. I think you can buy yourself a casino if you have enough money. I think people are going to from other countries. The, most of the casinos are owned from people from other countries anyways, um, the majority of it. So, um, but now, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be real. People are going to be selling because they were already selling even before the shutdown. I don't know if you guys are aware. People have thought that Vegas was doing great because they see, like, they'll see the hotel's capacity and they think that means oh that's the same but you don't understand the prices have gone down drastically in the sense of what the hotels used to get now you're saying oh no it's still expensive yeah they do all these extra stupid taxes now which part of that goes to raider stadium and stuff all these hotel taxes um that's why it seems expensive but the actual like your actual fee 
your original thing is way less than these hotels used to ever charge. For example, when Venetian first opened, it was like $800 a night to get a room. You can probably get a room for about $100 a night or probably now for when it first reopens, probably for way less. Um, and then they tack on some fees, which are some of those go to Raider Stadium. Thank you so much, Raider Stadium. All of these new taxes, we get them here at the, they tax the weeklies too. Same taxes that they tax the hotels. So we pay for that Raider Stadium whether we want to or not. Um, and they were kicking it to the tourists. Well, they were already behind on that tax because they have not had the best two years, or three years since um, the Mandalay Bay incident um technically two years because that was like the end of 2017 so the last you know 2018 2019 and now 2020 was starting to be a pretty good year it actually started really well I was I was feeling very very positive for Vegas because I have been here since 2013 so I have seen the ups and downs now people that come to visit don't necessarily see that. They might come and say, oh, it's just as busy as before. But no, I am I see more than most because I go to the casinos every day and I go to all the casinos and I I see the changes and I talk to the people and I meet all the people that tell me these things. And so I, and we know because of our job, we know how much people want to pay. That goes up and down according to the economy. So we're like the first to really see when things are, so Ever since 2017, Vegas has not done well. And this year was finally turning around, and I was so happy. And it was really looking good, and March is our best month for Vegas. And then Governor Sisolak shut down Las Vegas. So March and April and May are the best months for Vegas all year long, and we are closed. May already starts to not be as good. Like, you're, oh, you're going to be opening. But for one thing, we're going to be opening very, very slowly. And May already starts to be not as good because it gets hot here. So what's the best time is March and April because it's really nice, the weather. But come May, June, July, it gets very hot. So you get a lot of people that are young coming during the summer, but you get less um, businesses coming because most conventions don't want to be here when it's 120 degrees for the conventioners in their business suits and stuff. That's very unpleasant. So a lot of the conventions happen during March and also March Madness which is huge for Vegas. And we even host the Pac-12 here usually, and um, all that got canceled. That's why we shut down um, at first, because once they canceled all of the basketball, Vegas was pretty screwed. So MGM shut down their properties even before Governor Sisolak said anything. And I was like, that's fine. We'll still have Caesars property. So that would have worked. I was like, that would be great. But then Governor Sisolak decided to shut down everything. They really should have left. They were leaving the Caesars properties and downtown and a couple of the other, you know, ones that are, um, like I think Venetian was staying open when closed, but I think Venetian, the Caesars properties and a couple of the ones that are just one, one offs. Cause most of the properties are either Caesars or MGM. They own a big portion of what well, they did. Someone says the NBA and the NFL are, are, like, really dirty organizations. Well, yeah. I mean, if you guys haven't realized, there's so much corruption oh, in... There's um, no cold cloth. There's a lot of corruption in professional sports. Um, for one thing, most of the athletes are taking some sort of um, hormones or steroids, and we act like that doesn't occur. I dated a uh, bodybuilder that uh, sold steroids back in the day when I was, like, uh, how was I? 21. And he, he was a lot older than me. And um, he was, I was 21 and he was 45. I, I like the older men. That's why I married an older guy. Anyways, um, he told me all about a lot of the corruption with just the steroids and hormones. All that they do is they know ahead of time when they're going to be tested. So they just don't do their hormones or steroids when they're going to have a testing. It's not random. But at their level, they know. Um, and so... If you go, oh, they're tested, yeah, they know, so they just don't take it. When, they, But they're, they're always on hormones and steroids, almost all of the athletes. So that's one thing that's cheating right there. But it's almost not cheating in a sense of all of them are doing it. Then it's like, well, then it's kind of equaled out. But what would be unfair is if some of them don't, when most of them do. They probably all do at this point. But um, So there's one thing. And like I said, you get hormones and steroids even if you're just eating the regular conventional food. So they're getting hormones and steroids whether they want to or not. I, all of y'all are if you're not eating organics. 
Anyway, so that's one thing. But then there's so much corruption in the fact of um, uh, paying off players. That was why they, um, they never had pro sports here in Las Vegas for a long time. Because they thought that it would be too much of a conflict to have the betting be in the same city as where the athletes live. They thought that would definitely cause for a lot of um, corruption. Well, then they started to allow sports betting everywhere. So then they said, okay, doesn't matter now. So then they allowed pro teams to come to Vegas. Did you know prior to um, the Raiders coming here and prior to, like, I think this year, um, because we were kind of more part of it, the NFL did not even allow Vegas to uh, put a commercial in the Super Bowl. They were not allowed because they did not like the um, ideals and the morality of Las Vegas being Sin City. They did not allow that because the NFL... NFL is a very uh, Christian-based organization. They um, and if you don't think so, you're out of your mind. Well, that's they... very interesting. That's very interesting that because because you know when you think about the Christianity of the NFL, and it is because you watch. The no, game. I mean you have to. They they say in God we trust everything. You well, got to no, do the, the players actually pray. They pray. They they kneel. They say thank you God. Everything is a very 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 Christian. If you, go to, if you go to the players, most of them you know say God number one. Yeah, they say oh, I'll give all give all the credit to God. So ninety nine point nine percent would be that. So way. there's no separation. Of church and business at the NFL. At the NFL, I mean, you actually, yeah, I think you get in trouble if you don't, um, you know. Uh, how many? How many Jews? If you don't actually, you have to do I have the a question. Do you know how many today? I, I know in the past there have been, but today, how many Jewish players play in the NFL? I. Uh, don't know any that have openly come out about no, I mean, it. Yeah, that's well, why not? I mean, these are the so, sorts of things. No, that it's we need a to very Christian base because it seems like it's, they exclude Jews from playing. Well, no, football. okay, I don't know about that. I'm just saying, uh, most people. I think it's just a very. <laughs> no, he gets on some weird things. So you know, watch Sherwich over there. He's trying to just make up shit over there. No way. But no, what he's saying is, I think you wouldn't be very open about being Jewish in that community because it's a very Christian-based right, community. Right. So there are probably sure. Jewish players, but they're not going to come out because people are very... It's a very Christian-based organization, you guys. If you don't know that, you are crazy because, I mean, they, uh, they you know, do the, you know, the, all the... They are very uh, patriotic and so also are all of our... Patriotic stuff is very Christian-based and God we trust and we say, you know, these things. So... Those kind of go hand in hand. We're, we don't have much of a separation of religion and state. We were supposed to, but we don't. We are very well, Christian-based. I mean, you have to put your hand on the Bible in court. Yeah. That's. I don't know if they do that no more, but yeah, I know what you mean. Did they finally stop that? I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's it been a while. I don't think they do that no more. Um, but the thing Do is, they really? Okay, I don't know. It probably depends on what state you're in, but yeah, I think out here they don't do that. Much. Okay, good. I don't know. How's that? Anyway, um. But, um, so, the, anyways, the point is, so, yes, there's a lot of corruption there, and then there, there's um, a lot of, people go, how do you, okay, people have this tendency to think, well, how do you pay off the players, like, how do you, like, predict the outcome of the game, it's a game, you know what I mean, but they fail to remember that it's a lot easier to not catch a ball or to drop a ball or to throw a ball incorrectly than it is to necessarily win the game. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So often it's very easy to throw a game. And we don't seem to look at those guys. Oh, it was an accident. Oh, really? That was a very, that guy's a very good player to happen to uh, butterfinger that ball at that moment. So we often will look at, oh, well, well, you can't predict because, you know, it's a game and that guy's running and this and that and the other. But yeah, you don't look at the guy that's not doing what he's supposed to, where he's dropping the ball, where he's not blocking. Those are the ones that are generally getting paid off. Um, you know what I mean? And the, and that's a, uh, those ones you don't see as much because they're not the stars necessarily. You know what I mean? Like, or they are the star, but you thought they just messed up on that play. So there's a lot that happens there. A lot, 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 lot there. Um, and we saw a, happen in all sports. Of course, FIFA got in a lot of trouble for corruption in soccer uh, many years back. Right. Now I'm in. Um, so, I mean, if it, the thing is, you see, in an industry... They're the same. 
Mm-hmm. In other words, the same kind of people. So yeah, so if you see that they did it, you know it happens yeah, at all Yeah, because sports. they follow the similar models. It's, 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 and, and it's so much money. Here's the other thing. When there's so much money on the line, you can always know there's corruption. Because money just makes people do weird things. And when they hear millions of dollars at risk and all you got to do is uh, drop the ball... And then, you know, you have it there this way or, this, you know, what I mean, there's lots of people that are willing to right. do things that they wouldn't do for a dollar, but they'll do for millions right. of dollars. And so that's why we tried to keep that's why Las Vegas uh, for years made a very big attempt to keep sports out of Vegas because <gasps> I don't think Vegas made that attempt. Oh. I think w- the what happened is the sports <laughs> organizations already are corrupt, but they didn't like you all to know they're corrupt. So they felt if they were in Vegas, you all would assume the players are being paid off, even though they already are. But they thought being in Vegas, you'll be like, oh, of course, because you're paying off, because you gamble there, and then you bet, and the player's right there. You literally have the player betting with you. You know I mean? They're, they're in person there, so they thought that would be an issue. But now that you can bet everywhere, you're like, well... So they had to just finally drop it. The, but they still don't like it because still they want the illusion that it's fair and that there is no paying off of players and paying off of coaches and paying off of this and that. And and also even just teams working together. You know, you can have your team throw because then you get the best next pick for the NFL draft. If you're already shitty that year, you might as well be the worst team. You know what I mean? So, like, there's things you can do even as a whole organization. They cheat. We know this. Um, I was doing so much research about Al Davis uh, recently, and one of the things about Al Davis is the guy did not cheat. Um, He did a lot of weird things that people didn't approve of, but he is one of the most honest coaches ever, and that's why people love him so much. And he was not okay with people that were dishonest. And one of the people he had a huge issue with is Marcus Allen. And that's because Marcus Allen is greedy and he's a liar. Marcus Allen lied about not having, about, he had an affair with Nicole Simpson. If you guys don't know this, this is all facts. You can read about it. Marcus Allen was best friends with O.J. Simpson back in the 90s. He had an affair with Nicole Simpson um, after him, her and O.J. had broke up. O.J. Simpson found out about it and was fine with this. He did not kill Marcus Allen. He, they were still friends because it was his ex-wife, and they, he got over it. He just said, please, you know, don't do that again kind of thing because I heard him. That was his best friend. Well, when Nicole Simpson and the other guy, I forget his name, the fellow with her, uh, got killed, They asked Marcus Allen if he could testify in support of O.J. saying, I actually fucked his wife and he didn't do anything to me. So then that would have been a very valid source for showing that O.J. Simpson most likely did not kill Nicole Simpson. But Marcus Allen refused because he did not want his wife at the time to know that he had an affair. So he did not stand up for his best friend because he was so worried that his wife would just find out about his affair. So he was willing to let his best friend go to prison for life for a crime he didn't do. Do you all have your beliefs about OJ? But he did not kill Nicole Simpson or the the guy. Uh, He did not. And... We've actually proven that in a court of law. So if y'all, y'all go, oh, yes, he did. No. No, he did not. And Marcus Allen would not stand up for him. So that is one of the huge reasons that Al Davis hated Marcus Allen, along with before that, he couldn't stand him for all of the times that Marcus Allen held out to get more money and screwed over the Raiders to just try to get more on his contract. And Al Davis did not appreciate that. That's why he benched him for so many years. That's why people were so mad. Why would you bench the best player? Because Al Davis was about integrity. 
and he uh, didn't like people that were greedy and selfish and all about themselves that weren't team players that only cared about getting more and more money for themselves. And then he also didn't like someone that would be willing to let his friend rot in prison just because he didn't want to look bad. So if you guys don't know the Al Davis, Marcus Allen feud, there you go. That's it. And Al Davis was a wonderful man. Um, I, I'm a little bummed he died before they made it to Vegas. Um, because he, he's one of the all-time greats. And there's a lot of corruption in uh, football. And Al Davis was one of the coaches that really liked to have it be just about the game and not to be about all of this nonsense and all about all the money and everything. And all most of the players now are primarily about the money. The love of the game has been lost a lot. So that's why we've been doing the Raiders uh, anthem. It's not a lot of the Raider Nation hates us and they say we don't have any right to do the song and this and that. But you know what? When I read about Al Davis, I was like, man, there. I couldn't be supporting any of any other team than the Raiders after learning more and more and more about the coach. And I originally was a 49er fan. I grew up in California. And people go, oh, how can you be a 49er fan and then switch over to the Raiders? I don't know. I moved and I found out about the Raiders and I like them better now. Sorry. People are like, fair weather. Yeah. All right. I ditched the 49ers. I'm a Raider fan now. I actually have I've only been to two professional games and one was a Raiders game. I went to the Coliseum in Oakland. Uh, they played the Patriots. Unfortunately, they lost. I was so mad. And Tom Brady. I went, and they everyone had these shirts that said, fuck Tom Brady, which I thought was funny because if he had ended up going with the Raiders, which they were thinking about. But anyways, um, uh, growing up, I was a huge 49ers fan. And my dad actually worked um, at Sierra College, where they used to do their uh, 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 spring training, I think it was, spring or summer training, I don't remember, uh, there at the campus, and so my dad met all of like the 1989 um, 49ers, and he, because he w- did, he was a male mailman at the college, and he was backing up his truck and uh, didn't see this guy. Guy had to jump out of the way, and he gets out of the car, and it was Joe Montana, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm sorry." And Joe Montana, listen how cool he is. Told my dad, he's all, "It's all right. They pay me to get out of people's way." That's what he said to my dad. I was like, oh, how cool. But um, so I was only four. So I didn't get the opportunity to really understand what was going on, that these are all the 49ers. And so years later, I'm like, man, all the 49ers. I didn't really, you know, I was too young. But um, uh, yeah, my dad is funny. He's not into sports, but uh, he, he got a kick out of getting to meet all those guys back then. All of them, Jerry Rice, all of them, Steve Young. I was like, oh, man. But um, so I was very into football. Up until, um, you know, I watched it all in the military and stuff. But then, you know, once my mom died, um, she killed herself, for those of you that know, when I was in the military. Everything kind of changed. I just kind of like, I don't know. Things just didn't have the priority that they did prior to that, if that makes sense. Your world kind of gets turned upside down. So little things like sports just kind of became not as important. And I still watch them, but I just don't have the drive like I did. You know what I mean? Where before when that was like, oh, my God, I would go nuts for a sports game. Things like I just don't go nuts for anymore, you know. But um, I, I would really enjoy if we got to go to a Raiders game here in Vegas. I think that would be really fun. But yeah, I'm all about the Raiders now. Um, just once I thought they were the best team for Vegas. I mean, if I were to pick a team for Vegas, I would have picked the Raiders in the sense of it just kind of fits because they're a rowdy, crazy group. Um, but I do feel upset for Oakland because I know Oakland is very upset that they lost their team. And for that, I, I, I am bummed that even though we got this great opportunity, it had to come at Oakland losing the team. So that I feel... Uh, upset about because I, I've talked to a ton of people in Oakland. That's a big thing. Um, I actually stay in contact with this one guy. He's very, very involved from um, like he's been involved since the beginning uh, when they first started the Raider Nation stuff. Like he's an old timer and he calls me all the time. He doesn't even have a cell phone. He calls me on the landline, which I hate talking on the landline. And he 
is very upset about this. Um, uh, and they're, they're part of, he's part of um, this group that is the, 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 the original people. I don't, I don't know, you all might know more about this, but the Raider Nation, uh, that kind of concept started, um, I don't remember what year, but it kind of started where at first it was like you would, they'd have the players come out. This is what this guy, I won't say his name, he likes to remain anonymous, he told me about, you know, they would, after the game, it was such a little, it was a group of tailgaters that just started doing it that the players would actually come out in the beginning and hang out with all of the fans that were tailgating, which was a small group at first. So the players would come after the game. Everyone would just hang out in the parking lot. It was great. And then slowly that became the tailgating thing. And this guy was part of that original group. So, And then he's on, like, the board of whatever for, like, they've been... They're part of the ones that are not wanting them to move to Vegas. So there's a whole group that is trying to um, sue the Raiders and the NFL for letting um, and Mark Davis for having them move to Vegas because they feel that um, it's not fair to Oakland. And I, I, I do feel for them, and I, I agree that this is pretty shitty because they already lost their team once to L.A. and then they came back. But I will say one thing, you guys. The one thing they were supposed to do is build them a new stadium in Oakland, and they didn't. And this is not the first time that Oakland uh, kind of slacked on getting him a stadium. In the very beginning, when Al Davis first went to Oakland, they were supposed to make him a stadium, and it took forever for them to make him a stadium, and he had to play, like, like high schools and shitty things. It was crazy. Like, they played at, like, some crazy places in the beginning before, um, like, for practice and stuff because they just didn't have anything. And it took many years for Oakland to finally make them the Coliseum. But now that has been so many years because the Raiders are now 60 years old this year is their 60 year anniversary as a team. So that was, you know, probably how old is the Coliseum now? What, 30, 40 years old? I don't, I don't know the age. But um, now Al Davis, before he died, was wanting a new stadium. And uh, Oakland had promised that they would. Uh, that was one of the promises when they came back from L.A., is that they were going to make them a new stadium. And then they never did. So, in that sense, Oakland, you did mess up a little bit. Because had you made the Raiders a new stadium, they probably wouldn't have left. Because they wanted a new stadium. They were tired of playing at that old crack, crackety uh, Coliseum over there. It's getting old. I've been there. Yeah, it's fun, but it, it is old stadium. Um, but yeah, so now they're coming to Vegas. Uh, well... Hopefully everything's, to, I don't even know with all this shutdown, what's going on, but the stadium was continuing construction. That was, that was why I was saying, obviously Governor Sisolak knew it wasn't that deadly all along because he allowed the Raiders Stadium, which is his kind of baby in a sense. He's been part of that. that I believe he was elected kind of with that. Like that was in mind, like, okay, I'm the guy that's bringing the Raiders Stadium. That was kind of his thing, his campaign thing or whatever. So it's kind of his thing. And uh, he's, he feels that he's the one that coordinated to bring the Raiders here. That's why he, he takes that credit. Um, so he did not want that to stop. So that either either he thinks it's a deadly virus and he was re- willing to risk the lives of every construction worker in Nevada. That's your, that's So if he thought it was deadly, then he was willing to risk all of their lives to continue because he wanted the stadium. Or he knew it wasn't deadly and he said, keep the stadium going because I want that done because that's my baby. But everyone else, forget you all. So then he didn't care about all of us. So your two options are he doesn't care about all of us or he doesn't care about the workers at the stadium and all the construction workers. Those are the only two scenarios. So either way, he doesn't care about some people. And so... And that's how all politicians are. They don't really care about us. That's why they send 17, 8-year-olds to where I joined the military at 17. You can join at 17 if your parents sign for you to go. And they did. And so, you know, I go to Ward 17. And people go, oh, thank you for your service. But, like, your, your government sends you to stupid, pointless wars and risks the lives of 17 and 18-year-olds and then say, thank you for your service. But it's like, why? Most of these wars are over nonsense. Oh, so here's the new thing. China. China um, is mad at us again. Because we, because uh, Trump shut down the World Health Organization. You guys hear about this? Who? <laughs> I was like, what's who? World Health Organization, not the band. You guys know I wear that who shirt all the time. 
not the band, World Health Organization, and now China, I guess, is livid. So another reason China's mad again. And so this is just, you guys, this is a war, whether you realize it or not. But see, wars don't have to be fought the way they used to be with, um, you know, bombs and things. You can fight wars now, which we are doing those ones too, <sighs> but you can also fight them through uh, social media by just scaring people, fake news, all kinds of things. Look at what we did over a flu virus. Look at what we did to our own economy, to our own jobs. No one else even attacked us, and it's like doomsday here. We weren't even attacked. It's, we, it's like, attacked ourselves. So, oh, we were attacked by a virus, the one that comes around every year. Did you guys know that um, they found out, too, that um, California already had this flu virus in, like, January? Uh, and in February, most people recover from it. Oh, no, no, sorry, not January, February. November. Sorry, 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 months. In November, they recovered. In November 2019, they first got it. Sorry, sorry. I have so many numbers and dates in my head right now. They found out that they discovered that Californians had had it in November 2019. It's why there's less people dying in California right now because they already have an immunity. So all these people that are self-isolating and hibernating might already have an immunity. <laughs> Because they got the flu in November, they just thought it was a regular flu, which it is. We're not realizing that what the regular flu was the coronavirus, but it is a regular flu. Because <laughs> they recovered. Didn't even know. No, oh, I got the flu and recovered. Which is what you're going to do if you get the coronavirus. Unless you're very, very ill already. Or have a very low immune deficiency. Like uh, people that are already very sick are the ones at risk, but those ones are at risk for everything. So we're at risk for common cold. If you're very ill and in the hospital, common cold can kill you. Anything. Because you're that sick, those are the ones that are dying from the coronavirus. And the other things, you guys, we gotta get over this thing that death is the end. For one thing, let's say, let's say a million people died. That would be very, very tragic, okay? That would be very tragic. But here's the thing, all those million people, get to go to the next life, which is cooler than this one. So instead of always feeling all this sorrow, especially if those people were already sick and their life was not that great on earth, they're in a better place now. Everyone that just died from the coronavirus, which is only less than 50,000 in the U.S., affected was in the hundreds of thousands to millions around the world, not died. Remember to look at the numbers correctly. The numbers that have died are substantially less. That means people are recovering. That means it's a normal flu virus. But let's say a huge portion died, okay? We'll just say that. All of those people are going to the next. And I will be sad on this side for sure. I lost a mother and a brother. For sure, it is sad. It sucks. There's so many times I wish I could just have my mom in person. Like, like the other, yesterday, you guys, I got I had a really good experience with my mom um you know it's the thing it's not a people don't really understand exactly what it's like until you experience it but it's not something you like necessarily get to control where you're like talk to me now mom and give me the answers it's just you know but she's always there but sometimes you get the sense more than others and if you've lost love when you know what I'm talking about and yesterday I had one of the best times I was doing my makeup, and I just start bawling when I feel her presence. But still, there's that moment where you're like, man, if I could just see you or hug you or something, you know what I mean? So everyone experiences that. So yes, death is sad, but death can be very beautiful. My mom was not happy um, on earth. She killed herself. She People that knew her go, oh, she was a happy lady. No, but she was depressed her whole life. She... She had ups and downs. She was very uh, manic, so she would seem happy sometimes. She was very depressed most of the time. So on the next life, she gets to live the best life ever. And that's how we should feel for our loved ones, and especially for the elderly. That's why I laugh when a guy gets pushed off the bus when he's really old, because that guy's laughing on the other side. You guys don't understand. Okay, people got really mad. at We did do a podcast, in a sense. We did more like, a, someone was saying, like a podcast where me and Jared sat there and we kind of did the interaction where we interviewed each other kind of thing. And we, this was about a year or two ago. And this gentleman had got pushed off. <laughs> I'll laugh now. Okay, so there was this old man 
in Vegas that was bickering with this black woman on the bus, and he was being very nasty. We don't know what they were saying, because all we see is the surveillance tape, where you can't hear the audio from the bus. You can just see his face. He's just super bitter. And then he gets up to get off the bus, and he says something more to her, something nasty. You can just tell by the way he's moving this in his scowl that it's a nasty thing. So the woman pushes him. Well, unfortunately, because he was getting off the bus, and she just gave him a little extra push. Well, unfortunately, since he was very old, and he had, like, a cane, he hit the pavement, and he died. Well, everyone went nuts on this woman, of course, you know. Well, I took the other side, and I was laughing my ass off. And I was like, man, that old fart deserved that. He was so nasty, you know. And also, um, I was already channeling. The guy it was laughing himself, and people all oh, were appalled by me. Oh, how can you laugh? The woman pushed this old man to his death. I'm like, one thing, if you were that quick to die in the sense of being pushed is going to kill you, you didn't have too many more days. That's what I'm saying. Same with... This virus, if the flu virus is going to kill you, you were already close to dying anyways. So, people are like, oh. Okay, I've lo- most of my grandparents are dead. And I don't know why people want to live so long. I don't know why people want to live to 100 years old and stuff. I'm like, why? My family, most are dying in their 60s, 70s. Fine with me. I don't need to live that long. So, this idea that we want to extend our lives forever and ever and ever, too. I'm like... Shoot, if you're already sick, I'd be like, come on, coronavirus, take me out. Now's my time to go. I've been struggling long enough. I mean, if you're that sick, if you're in the hospital, you're just that sick. So I don't understand um, this one thing, fear of death. You really shouldn't fear death. Because for one thing, like I said, so anyone that's died is in another place. We don't fully understand that because we can't. I've said this before, but let me say this like again because a lot of people think, why can't we know the next life? Or they think they know because they've read a book, a religious book generally. You can't know the next thing because we don't have the words or pictures or concepts or ideas to describe what it looks like or is like because nothing on earth can compare so if you use things on earth you limit your next next existence because why would you want to know if it's something better than what you know like if you say i want it to be this well that it's going to be better than that so don't limit yourself with the things you know because that's why when you do channel, and people channel all the time. You think that's crazy? Artists channel all the time. That's why you go, wow, a person sang just like that other a singer. They were channeling them. People do it all the time. They'll even dress up um, as the person, and uh, they'll say channeling, but they won't realize that they're really channeling. They are really channeling that dead person. If the dead person wants to be channeled, some people might be doing it as a fraud, but I mean the ones that you're like, whoa, they really are. Why not? That dead person is still around. So they're like, yeah, yeah, let's sing my song. Let's do it. That'd be great. If they like you, if they don't like you and you're a fraud, it might not go so well. And those are the people that you're like, eh, they're singing their song, but it just ain't working. You know, and those are the ones that obviously they're not channeling. But a lot of people, when they do covers, do channel the original artists. If they're doing a good job, they're probably channeling the artists. The artists say, like, yeah, hell yeah, that's my song. Let's do it. So um, you can channel anyone that has died, um, and they want to because most people are so scared of it. They're like, oh, I don't want to mess with the dead stuff. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, that's satanic. Oh, that's demonic. Oh, that. Whatever. It's fun. No, you can learn a lot from the dead. That's where we learn everything. That's what I'm saying, where you can eat animals. See, once you realize dead is not a bad thing, death is is a beautiful thing, then you'll feel okay eating animals as well. Because you know the animal goes to a better existence. For one thing, animals definitely go to a better existence than what we have here because most of them have a pretty crappy scenario on Earth. Most animals are either on leashes, in cages, kind of getting to graze but not really getting to be wild, you know, things like that. Um, their lives are not the best. So eating them is 
giving them to the next life. They're like, the ones that you're like keeping as pets forever, they're like, gosh, darn. <laughs> no, some pets love you. I'm saying like the one, people that are scared to ever kill the animal because they are, are trying to say like, don't eat the animals. You know, some people are like, don't eat the animals. Save it forever. That animal's like, what are you talking about? Get me out of here. <laughs> Why do you think I want to eat grass all day? I want to go to the next life. And then the vegans are trying to save his ass, and the cow wants to go the next life. <laughs> so it is funny. But, yeah, once you become comfortable with death, then um, you won't be scared of anything. Because if you don't fear death, what do you got to fear? I don't fear death. I don't. I don't at all. I, I don't care if I die. I've tried to kill myself, so that will make you not fear death. I literally have tried to kill myself. People think that, uh, you know, that it... it, it uh, was fake or something. No, I went to where I thought I was going to die. I took the pills, thought it was going to kill me. Unfortunately, didn't at the time. I was so irritated when I woke up. <laughs> but I had passed out and everything, you know. I did it three times. You'd think I'd learn, but I was too wuss to do anything else, and I didn't have a gun. My mom had a gun, so she killed herself with a gun. So there was no uh, messing up on that one. But I didn't have a gun. I tried slitting my wrists, and I was too wuss on that. <laughs> that hurts. So I tried pills three times. And now, luckily, I lived. But at the time, I was not happy to wake up. I was like, God damn it, this is terrible. Can't even kill myself. Um, but once you do that, you don't fear anything in life. Because if you are willing to die, then what do you got to lose? And everyone should be willing to die. So there's, um, I think it's um, Sam, I want to say... Samurais and ninjas, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure which which group. I think it's like a Bruce Lee thing. So where is he? What is Bruce Lee considered? I want to see. It's just I don't know what his category would be. But they say you should die every day and and imagine killing yourself every day, because then you can truly live. That's like the way... Jared Rich, is that the ninja or the samurai? No, one of the two. Um, that, that, that's their philosophy. Uh, maybe both. That, so then what that means is if you're okay to die every day, then you're f fully free. If you fear dying, like even if it's, oh, I have kids or this or that, but you have to be okay with that, you could die and your kids would have to carry on. That has to be something that you're okay with. And if you're not okay, then you're not really living. Because then now you're chained to this existence. And kids are a tough one. Because no one wants to leave their kids. But you have to be okay with that. Because at one point it will happen. Or your kid will leave you first, which is worse. So you want it to be you first. Believe me. Um, you don't want to lose your kid. That's a harder scenario then it's easier for a parent to die than for a parent to lose a child. You know what I'm saying? So um, you want the parent to go first. So you need to realize that every day you honestly have to be okay with dying. And then you can fully live. If you can't be okay with dying, you're never going to fully live. You go, oh, well, I can't be okay. I got my kids. I got, I got a baby. I got a, a, a. I know. And guess what? Babies do lose parents, and those things happen. So you have to say, that could happen, my family will carry on, but that could happen. And if you say that, then you would not panic when something like a flu virus comes around. Because you would say, if it's my time, it's going to happen. I'm not going to shut down the whole world for a flu virus. Now, if we had really had a real epidemic, like a really crazy one, then I would say this would have been good steps that we took, but it's not. It's a regular flu virus. The numbers are coming out. It's not what they had originally projected. They're coming. The, now the projections are like uh, that it's going to be less than 60,000 in the U.S. Those are the projections that have died. That's right around the regular flu virus. Regular flu virus is around 50,000. That's just a projection. I think we're not even to that yet. So we're still below the regular flu virus. So we've shut down the whole world for not an epidemic, for not a deadly virus for just a flu virus that people are recovering from unless you were very unhealthy and very very ill so if people had been more comfortable with death and been okay with dying we would not 
have reacted the way we did. But most people are so scared to die. And I don't know why. Why would you be scared to die? The next life is going to be better. Unless you think it's not going to be better. But that's not true. It's not true. It's always better. Don't worry. You didn't do anything bad enough to make the next place worse. No one did. No one did. That's the funny thing. Even the biggest assholes. You didn't do anything that won't give you a second chance in the next life. That's what they don't want you to know. That's why people do these good deeds because they're so worried about the next life. Hey, it don't matter. You should be cool here. That'll make it a lot better because here's what the thing is. Every place you go, you get more enlightened. Some people choose not to be enlightened. So it's going to be rougher <laughs> each time because they're just less enlightened. So just their existence in each place is just not as good as it could be because they are not opening their mind. doesn't mean they're being punished. They're just less aware. The less aware you are, life can be harder. When you are scared to die, life is hard. When you are worried about everything, life is hard. When you just say, fuck it. <laughs> well, everyone's going to die. My day's coming one of these days. Then... Life will be very enjoyable for you. So your existence here will be enjoyable. Your existence in the next place will be enjoyable. These people that were worried here <laughs> probably go and do the same thing in the next life. They're going to worry in whatever utopia is over there. So that's all that's going to happen. It's not going to be that they're punished. You can't be punished for things. It would be unfair because we are, our, our knowledge is, um, uh, we've been, uh, most of us have been brainwashed by society and by religion and by the government and by our parents and by our teachers and by our bosses and by our loved ones and because everyone's brainwashed so it just they brainwash the brainwash the brainwash my mom brainwashed me big time i grew up religious i was totally brainwashed and um i grew up christian and uh my brainwashing ended when my mom killed herself i was like whoa because my religion told me my mom was going to hell and I was like, and that she was going to rot in hell and burn and be uh, tortured. And I said, there's no fucking way my mother would be tortured because she's the nicest person I've ever met to this day. And I said, there's no way the universe would do that to my mother. So then I knew it was all BS. Because if my mom's not going to be tortured, no, no mother's going to be tortured because everyone feels the same about their own mother. And everyone has a mother. And every woman, um, you know, she might not be a mother, but they have a mother. <laughs> um, so the thing is, you don't have to worry about the actions that you did here. Now, I'm not saying be an asshole. I'm saying be a nice person. But don't worry about things like, I cheated, I stole, I lied, I I had sex before marriage, I did drugs, I, I lied on my taxes, I lied to my significant other, I cheated on my wife, I saw a hooker, I this and that. I mean, Who gives a shit? I'm telling you, no one on the other side gives two farts about any of those nonsense things that you guys are talking about that we worry so much about. They're like, what? Why are y'all worrying about that? Y'all need to just enjoy yourself. Are you kidding me? Why are you having more sex? Party. Enjoy yourselves before you die. What are you doing? Why aren't you living? You only got 80 years or less. Or maybe a couple of y'all, y'all living to 120. Majority of y'all are dying younger than that. So why aren't you having fun? That's what they're saying. So my mom kept saying to me, that's why when she first died, uh, I just said, fucking, I didn't know why. Because I had been very uptight my whole life. I was like a straight-A student. 
I was valedictorian in junior high. And I was um, doing all the college classes in high school, all advanced stuff. And I even graduated high school a year early because I was already just done with my classes. And um, then I went to the military and I excelled there. I was an honor grad and then I got airmen below the zone. If you're not in the military, you don't know what I'm talking about. But all these things, I like ranked higher than my peers. If you're in the military, you know what these things mean. Um, and, I, and then I became an instructor within two years, and I was on the fast course, and then my mom killed herself. And I was like, for the first time in my life, I did not give a fuck about anything. I started to be like, Pfft. so I just, um, at that time I was in the military, so you know, I, I didn't do drugs, uh, but I drank, and I was bulimic. So I just dove into my alcoholism and bulimia big time and and everything else just kind of dwindled away you know as you get deeper in um that stuff and then when I got out of the military I tried drugs and um I um am someone that says I think you should try drugs um they'll be all oh. the one disadvantage of drugs is the legality issues with drugs that's what's the hardest part of drugs, the legality and how expensive they are because they're illegal makes them expensive. But the actual experience of drugs is something that I think most people should experience at some point in their life because it's so mind-opening. Uh, not all drugs, and I wouldn't recommend all of them. I'm more talking about the ones from Earth. Those are the ones that I like um, to say for people to ever um uh, experiment with. I don't like anything that's man-made. So things like meth and pharmaceuticals are man-made drugs. Things like coke do come from the earth. Things like weed definitely is not even a drug, but people put in the class of drug from the earth. Um, I, I've never tried, but some people do things like mushrooms. Those are from the earth. Those I, I would think would give you a good experience. But things that are man-made those are our issue ones, and we want to focus on these ones instead of these ones. Like, we allow the pharmaceutical drugs to be legal, which those are way more toxic, and I've experienced both. And I tell you what, <laughs> the pharmaceutical drugs are stronger than anything I've ever taken as a street drug. Um, and I got the sickest and the most addicted. We um, And like I said, when I went to the VA hospital, they gave me Dilaudidin when I, I had this horrible infection where my face, I have it on my Facebook, it was like from 2012 in Portland. And they gave me Dilaudidin, which is like a super strong pain pill. And I got so sick, I was throwing up just from even when they give it to you. And then I broke out in hives over my whole body. And they were just giving that cr like crazy, which is like insanely strong pain pill I mean I could I didn't know what it was uh, they just they just gave it to me you know and they gave me a whole bottle of it and Jet Rich was one like are you kidding me sheesh on the black market those things would be gold my gosh um because and they just like pop they give those to people the VA is really bad for that where because um people were in so much pain from military stuff that they Get the pain pills, and the problem with the pain pills is people get highly addicted to them. I know they're in pain, but it is not a solution because all it does is numbs the pain, and then you get addicted to that pain pill, and you have to take more and more, and then eventually you eventually have to come off of them because they eventually stop working, or you, you know you're just taking too many to where you're gonna OD, or you have to come off them, and the coming off of pain pills is where people actually die from the withdrawals from the pain pills. You can die from, they have to wean you off the pills, they're that strong. There is not um, a, a drug from the earth that is that toxic like that to where, okay, well maybe heroin. <laughs> Heroin. Okay, we'll put that one over there. We'll put heroin all with other ones. But the other ones I'm saying, like, Coke, people get this back in such about Coke, I'm like, Man, you can't do enough coke to OD. The people that OD on coke, they're not ODing on coke. They're ODing on the other things they did with coke. Very few people only do coke. I don't know if you guys have never experienced it. It's a very intense drug. It makes you shaky, you're sweaty. So you generally will take something with it like alcohol or uh, people will take Xanax or uh, weed. Often people mix weed with it or... Um, but weed would be a good mix. Those would be a better mix. But um, the ones that can be deadly are people who miss heroin 
or the pain pills with Coke. And it's the up and down that can cause major issues because you're really shocking your system. Like I said, you never want to shock your system. So the things where you're going, because what happened, people jolt their system with the Coke and then they knock themselves out with the heroin and it's like, it's really bad. Um, and they can actually, you know, have heart attacks and stuff from just the, the extremes. But just doing Coke... Man, I'm telling you, you have to be unhealthy already. Like, if someone had a heart attack from Coke, it would probably be because they were way overweight. You'd be like, oh, how are you overweight if you're doing Coke? I don't know. People get fat doing Coke. It's the weirdest thing. Like, how do you get fat doing Coke? I do not understand that. But, yeah, here we do um, only weed. That's our thing. We did do Coke in the past. Um, and I, I speak about it because a lot of people are, are um, scared to talk about their past uh, drug use, you know, like as if, oh, Oh, and like, I like to talk about it and I like to talk about it that it was a good experience. Um, I, you know, of course there was the negative things in the, in the sense of the main negative thing is it's very expensive. So you spend a lot of money, um, and it's illegal. So there's a lot of, uh, just even if you don't get in legal problems, there's just that fear all the time, which creates, that's the most anxiety. The biggest anxiety you get from drugs is because they're illegal, so you're, like, freaking out while you're doing it. Um, but if you were to take those two scenarios out, it can be a very good experience to experience once in a while. <laughs> Not all the time, you guys. I mean, you don't want to live in that state all the time. That's why weed, you can live in that state all the time. It's, it's, a, it's a very different experience. It's not so intense. Um, it's actually what we need we have cannabinoid receptors in our body so we feel lacking when we don't have weed we actually feel more content when we have weed because those receptors get what they need we have receptors for all kinds of things but when the cannabinoid receptors get what they need they feel really satisfied so weed can be very satisfying for people in ways they never realized where they thought they needed other things like i said before i used to do coke alcohol and bulimia now that i do weed I cut out all three of those things, and I cut out caffeine, and we used to store organics. All of this due to weed. Weed opened up my mind and made me feel better. It heals me every day. Even when I'm coughing, it's healing because I'm getting this stuff out of my, um, like the phlegm and the sense that's been in there for years because I was bulimic for 15 years. And that's a lot of damage to your esophagus and your throat and all that stuff. I had almost completely lost my voice in like 2014. And then um, I started, I, I, 2015, end of 2015 is when I finally said enough enough because I almost died. But then all of 2016, I still struggled. I went back and forth a bit with the bulimia. And now for 2017, 18, 19, we're now in 20. Um, I've been bulimia free, which very few people recover from bulimia because they continue to try to eat the things that they did before. And if you do that, you won't recover, unfortunately. Uh, you have to change your lifestyle. It's the only way. You can't continue to eat. Because one thing, you can't have the habit of something and think that, like, you're going to be able to just get up. Like, you need to change your lifestyle. If you continue to do the same things, you're gonna fall in the same trap. Like if you every day set yourself up for the same thing, you go, I only I'm gonna I'm gonna sit and, and watch this TV program, but I'm gonna grab the chips, but I'm gonna tell myself to only eat five chips. Yeah, right. You're gonna eat the whole bag. So just don't put yourself in these scenarios. Like you have to change your lifestyle. So as a bulimic. You can't say, oh, I'm just going to not, I'm just going to try to not eat. If you ever were a bulimic, you will overeat. You just, it's your brain, it got so into that habit if you did it for long enough. Same with if you have an overeating problem. Now, when I say bulimic, I also mean overeating, okay? If the only difference between someone that is obese and someone that is bulimic is bulimics throw up. But bulimics should be obese, I should have been obese for the amount of food I ate. It's really not fair. And it's really it's really not fair on a couple levels because, for one thing, it's so wasteful and greedy. But it's also not fair because most bulimics judge fat people. Most bulimics think they're a little bit better than the fat person. Like, oh, at least I'm not fat. Well, yeah, but you ate as much as that person. All you did was go to the toilet and throw it up. So how do you think you're any better than that? That's when... I stopped my bulimia was when Jenna Rich kept pointing out that I was no different 
than the people that I was judging. So what happened is I was very judgy because I was actually judging myself, but it would come out where I would judge other people that overate. Like if I saw someone at a buffet, oh, look, that person overeating. Um, it would bother me, even though I was doing the same thing. So that's why it bothered me because I was doing So he said, the only difference with that person is they're not throwing up. You're doing the exact same thing. And I'm like, oh, man, you're right. You know, I, I was acting the same way, you know, gording myself. And then I thought, yeah, I'd be a total hypocrite. And so that's when I say for most of you, you're probably not bulimic. You're probably overweight. So anything I say can relate to you as well. And I know the struggle of being sitting there and just wanting to eat. And even if even if you didn't have the food available, let's say you said, well, I'm not going to have it in the house. Now you're sitting there and you're just like white knuckling it, watching TV and all these ads and you're hungry. That's not a state to live in either. So what I'm trying to offer you guys is a state where you feel content all the time and you're eating to where you feel content. You're not overeating, but you feel full. And then you go about your way, and you no longer are focusing on the food. It is not a daily obsession, uh, and the weight just starts to come off. You know, you, the thing is people want to be instantly thin overnight. That's never going to happen healthily. So you have to just know that you've got to just change your habits, and the weight will start to shed off. And I'll tell you the things that you got to cut out in a minute here. But if you start to cut those things out, You'll just notice, and what will happen is you'll start to feel better. So that'll come even before you even necessarily notice the pounds coming off. But once you start to feel better, the pounds come off even easier because you're like, wow, I feel good. So the things I would recommend, what we do is we eat all organics, GMO-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, cat feet, excuse me, <coughs> I'm going to cough for the most important one, Caffeine free, alcohol free, that's an important one too. Artificial anything free, basically, and basically sugar free. The only sugar we get is through uh, organic leafy greens and organic garlic. So we eat an all meat diet. Um, it's basically, uh, you could relate it most to Atkins, I guess, back in the day where they did the. Uh, but ours is just a, a different version because it's all organics, but where you're you're primarily just eating meat. Um, and I I like beef is my thing, so we eat organic beef, greens, and garlic for every meal. As you guys saw, uh, we did a little bit variations with the shutdown of um, chicken and some some organic chicken and some wild. If you're going for fish, you want to go wild because what we're trying to avoid is. The antibiotics, the hormones, the steroids, all the pesticides, um, the genetically modified stuff. Because what we want to eat is things from the earth. So I'm saying when you stick with things from the earth, even when it comes to drugs with the things that were from the earth, you're going to be fine. When you start doing things that are man-made, like the pharmaceuticals, like all of this new processed packaged food that ugh, is just who knows what this stuff is. If you don't even know, if you don't know the word that's in the ingredients of something you're eating, you shouldn't eat it. Like if the word is not a word you know, if you have to look Look up the definition of the word, you shouldn't eat it. If anything on your package is a word you don't understand, it should literally say organic apple, organic collard green, organic beef. The ones, the ones I have, the organic beef, the ingredient is organic beef. That is the only ingredient. There is not things with x's and z's and all these words that you don't even know what what in the world you're looking up that is the stuff we want to avoid that is artificial that is genetically modified that is whatever it is your ingredients should be words that you know exactly what they are without any sort of scientific background so not because you know the words because you're a scientist. I mean the common person knows the words as in they are real foods. Like apple, beef, collard green, garlic. Not these crazy things. And the other things we really want to avoid are any of those artificial sweeteners, artificial flavorings. 
Natural does not mean anything. Do not fall into the natural trap. It is a marketing term only. It has no actual uh, regulation of any sort. It has no definition legally for what natural means. Any company can put natural on their package. It doesn't mean anything. So be very careful to not fall for the natural. Now, I'm not saying natural is not a better option than conventional. Some companies are putting it because they are choosing some better options, like some of them are saying there's no hormones or steroids. It can be better than some of the conventional options, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Whereas USDA organic does mean something. There's a regulation for that. Not all organics mean anything either. If it doesn't say USDA organic, you're also in the same trap of kind of up to the person's choice if they want to follow any sort of thing because they're not following the USDA. So they're just putting organic on there and people will fall for it. So be very careful when you're looking at the labelings too to not fall for just marketing things just like we're falling for this hype over this virus. You can also fall for the hype. Ooh, that looks good. They put natural. Ooh, they put... Uh, no coloring, no flavoring, no this, that, or whatever, but be very careful because they'll even put no sugar and then they'll add sugar. So look at your ingredients. Most of your ingredients will say sugar as an ingredient when you're like, why would this have sugar? Things that you wouldn't even expect. One time I got a, um, what is that thing called? Uh, a stevia. One time I got a stevia droplet thing from Whole Foods. It was so stevia is supposed to be a replacement for sugar, which those are don't do the artificial. Well, I did a whole blog on that artificial. No, 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 throw it out the window. I mean, even the stevia, but so I thought at the time stevia would be good. So I thought I'll get to these chocolates and I'm doing them and I look at the ingredients. This is supposed to be a sugar replacement, right? And one of the actual ingredients is sugar, it literally said sugar. I said, Why would they put sugar? in a sugar replacement. <laughs> so, I mean, they literally will add sugar to a sugar replacement, but your sugar replacement ones are not any better, so don't be thinking that. Those ones are, if anything, worse. But they added sugar to the sugar replacement. I thought, oh, jeez. But um, th- know, the, know the words for sugar, too. <laughs> know the different words for sugar. They'll, they'll use tricky words. It still means sugar. That's one of those you do want to look up because educate yourself on the different words they use for sugar, and there's a lot in um, ingredients. Uh, you can look up what just if you first uh, educate yourself a little bit on what those things were if you wanted to know what some of the crazy words are, and then when you go to look at your other products, you'll be like, oh, geez, they do all have this. And what you want to eat, only if you want to be thin and feel good. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. If you are feeling great, then don't listen to anything I'm saying and do exactly what you're doing. But if you are not feeling great and you're watching my blog because you're like, uh, she looks thin and she looks happy and healthy, what is she doing? Uh, Then that's what I'm telling you all. And I always struggled with my body in the sense I never felt comfortable with my body. Even when I had an eating disorder, I would have never been sitting here like this with you guys, ever. I, for one thing, probably would have been in pants because I started to get, like, spots on my legs from eating disorders can cause crazy things because you're so unhealthy that your body starts to react. So I started getting, like, these terrible spots on my legs. So I'd wear long pants. My stomach was always bloated, so I would not be showing off my stomach by any means. And it wouldn't be tight here. I'd probably be wearing something loose. And my arms would probably be really even skinnier than they are because I had, like, skinny arms. Um, And I'd have, like, a bloated face. And I would not be comfortable sitting here. And that's how I felt the majority of my life. Now I sit here and people are like, oh, cover up. I'm like, no, because you know what? This is the first time I feel good about my body and I'm going to show it off and I'm going to feel good about it. And I didn't do this when I was young. I was so conservative. I was a girl in high school wore like jeans and sweatshirts, you know. I was a cheerleader, but I was like the dorky cheerleader that every day that I had to wear my cheerleader, people would be like, who is she? Like, no one knew who I was. But then every other day I'd blend in, you know, in my sweatshirt. But then I'd pop up once in a while if you had to wear your cheerleader. And they'd be like, you're a cheerleader? 
you know, and then they'd forget again. It was like, I, I kind of, I was very quiet, and I didn't really exist. I was the one cheerleader, no one knew my name, no one asked me to a dance, nothing like that. I was kind of a dork. I was super studious, you know, but, um, but I was also very insecure. So I felt fat. I hated wearing my cheerleading outfit. I felt so fat when we had to wear it on cheerleading day. Oh, God, it was the worst. So they would, we would choose on what we were going to wear, and I was always hoping we'd choose the jacket and the sweatpants because, you know, we had the warm-ups. But all the other girls had good bodies, so they always wanted to opt for the least amount, and I'd be like, Ugh. and we had to wear what everyone wore, so we had to be in uniform. So I would always be voting for, let's wear our pants and our jackets today. And we'd only get to do that if it was super cold and raining, and those were my... Um, favorite days even for the games because I was I was it's funny you go why did you cheer if you well I thought it would help with my uh self-esteem I thought let me become a cheerleader because I love dance and it'll help but it didn't and that, that was what happens with a lot of people they do things because they think it's going to help but then at the end of the day they still feel insecure so then they're stuck there doing this thing and they don't want to be there because they want to just hide and they want to put on more clothes and that's happening with most of the artists right now so what we're seeing is art is taking a shift because very few artists really feel confident with their bodies because now we're seeing for the first time artists are starting to put on a lot of weight we artists historically used to be pretty thin because for one thing they were a lot of times on a lot of drugs and um they stayed very active by you know doing tours and um they just you know by performing kept them in shape uh, because the food was enough like i said when the food like when you're eating like this just staying active will keep you really toned and fit but as the food is getting worse and worse and worse and people are drinking more and more caffeine you're seeing even the artists the movie stars the actors they're all putting on weight and um what happens is as people put on weight they feel more sluggish they don't really feel like performing to the level that they did you know artists are getting more tired on stage you're not seeing as much energy coming from the artists if anything they're kind of being more like mm. i mean i think justin bieber's song that came out recently was i don't care and they did a green screen like this and him and ed Sheeran came in for a couple of takes with a green screen we were like that's the effort these artists took for these you know millions of dollars they're making and they were like, i don't care they really don't care. I mean, the song was a good title for it. They don't care. And then when I see even Justin Bieber, you know, back in the day, he was, now when he moves it, literally, it's like he's in slow motion and doing half steps because he's like, they don't want to look too cool. I wouldn't want to move too much, you know. wouldn't want someone to think I actually enjoy this. You know, it's weird. It's like the artists are just, they're like, they literally are just like dead inside and what's happening is they are losing the passion because they um as you don't feel confident you do less and less things it's just the way it goes confidence gives energy to people when uh, it's just something that's why when people lose weight they just start feeling all this energy because it's just their confidence lifts and it, I don't know why it's that way, but that's just the way we are. I think it's because weight has to do with not just looks. It actually is unhealthy for you because it's putting pressure on all of your organs. So anytime you are more weight than you normally should be by nature, you're going to put more pressure on everything. Your feet, your knees, your joints, all your joints, everything, because you're added weight. Your body was made to be a certain way. I don't know what your weight is or your body type is. Everyone is different. That's where we get problems where people want to look like everyone else. We all are different, but everyone has a weight that their body was supposed to be uh, by birth. And now most people don't have that weight and not your fault. It's because by birth, most people were born even fat if their mom was eating unhealthy. A lot of babies are being born fatter and fatter. You're seeing fatter and fatter babies now um, because they're immediately given the not so healthy food they're given formula genetically modified formula and formula is just bad anyways uh, mother's breast milk is the best thing a baby can have and um even if a mom works she should uh do the thing where you you know what is it called where they do it ahead of time uh, i don't know what those things are called where they you know they put it on there anyways um because that's the best thing for a baby and the only milk a human should ever consume is their mother's milk um and then you know as a baby that should be it we shouldn't be drinking milk um as adults um unless you're into drinking 
<laughs> women's breast milk. But <laughs> then maybe maybe that'd be healthy for you. I don't know. Maybe that's super healthy for you, and we're missing out on that. Uh, but I'm saying we decided only children do that, so um, we should not be drinking other animals' milk. And that's why dairy is an issue. We think that it's okay to drink cow's milk because the cows drink it, but it's made for the cows and for their digestive system and their bodies and their huge bodies. Cows are supposed to be, you know, come out to be, you know, 1,500, 2,000 pounds, maybe a little less or maybe a little more. Um, Humans were not supposed to be that big. But if you eat the fuel that was for the calf... It's going to make you that big, and your digestive system can't handle it anyways. That's why you see so many allergies to milk. Um, Because too much protein, too much sugar, and too much fat for our digestive system is the perfect amount for cows. Same with our mother's milk. It was perfect for babies. It's not necessarily perfect for other animals. And you don't see in nature animals drinking other animals' milk unless maybe you saw where, like, an animal took in another animal and had to for survival. But you generally would not see a healthy animal go up to another animal and just start sucking on the tit of another animal. Um, It's very weird in nature. Um, And what you want to think when you do diet is you want to think nature. That is what's going to be the healthiest. When we started making everything so user-friendly convenient um then we lose the essence of the food and you lose a lot of nutrition in um even just cooking things you lose the nutrition when you microwave your stuff we do not use the microwave um for anything people eat so you can take even your healthy food and then you just microwave all the nutritions out of it so we don't microwave our um, organics we eat them as they're warm. If they get cold, we eat them until they're not edible enough, you know. If it gets too cold, we're like, it's not good anymore, and then we'll finally throw it away. But we usually hopefully eat it before because we don't tend to – we try not to tend to waste the organics. Now, people have this concept to not waste food. You should definitely waste food if the option is – to stick it in your body instead of the trash can for unhealthy food. So we have this tendency to never waste food. When you're eating conventional food, that food is not good for you. Do not think that you are a better trash can than the trash can or that you shouldn't. Uh, for one thing, that food, there's a lot of it, and it's and it's cheap, So and you probably ate enough already, so you don't want to waste some of it if you made too much. I mean, don't try to waste food, but I'm saying let's say you made too much, and people have this concept, let's finish it, don't want to waste it, so they gourd themselves. Why would you want you yourself to be the human trash can when it'd be better to just, like, the choice is either the food goes to waste or you, you stuff yourself. Unless you're starving, let and like if you're full, let the food go to waste. I and mean, we oh, uh, all money down the toilet. Well, now you got that in your fucking ass. Is that what you wanted? Did you want a bigger ass? You didn't need any more storage. You had enough, so you might as well just let that food go to waste. And we have this terrible concept: don't waste food. Don't waste food. Put it in your body. That was only when we were truly starving. And I know now we're at potential where people don't have food. But still, don't make yourself be the human trash can for the food that should be thrown out just because you don't want to waste it. You get what I'm saying? Now, don't go out to waste food. We don't want to do that either. But definitely don't make yourself be the disposal because you didn't want to throw it in the garbage. Um, that makes no sense. That makes absolutely no sense, especially if you're already struggling with your weight. Throw out a little food. Seriously, give it to some animals outside. Give it to the birds. Give it to, you know, your dog or something if you're really worried about wasting. But I'm telling you, when it's the conventional stuff, don't worry about wasting it. They can make more of it. It's the organics that you don't really want to waste because those we are in a limited supply. There is only so much organic real food. If you're eating that, yeah, tend to try to eat that, but you generally won't waste organics because they're such a smaller portion anyways. Organics, what happens, people go, they're so small. I know why organics are smaller. They're smaller because that's the way food used to be, and that's how food's supposed to be. We started making food bigger with antibiotics, hormones, steroids, genetically modified because we wanted, instead of this size apple, we want this size apple. Instead of a steak this size, we want a steak this size. Well, that's not from nature. Um, it is now because we've hyped up the 
the cows. You think, oh, well, we're eating a real cow. Yeah, but you made the cow bigger than they were supposed to be. Like, if we hadn't messed with it. So we're talking organics is the food that's not messed with by humans, basically. Now, of course, we can't have the true food from nature. So all of the food is a little bit messed up by humans, even organics, like I said. But we're doing it as best as we can. The idea would be if we could grow the stuff ourselves, make it ourselves, you know, have it know for sure that we were doing it right, and then you would know. But you, in current society, you got to go with let's just choose the best option we have, which right now is organics. And that's the best option for the animals as well. Um, they take the... That's so why it's more expensive, too, is because... They're giving better treatment to the animals, but it's also more expensive because less people are wanting organics. So if more people wanted organics, the price of organics would come down. It's one of those what the masses want is always what's cheaper. So if more people started eating organics, then the prices would come down. And that's what did happen um, at Amazon uh, oh, with the Whole Foods. Once they bought, when Amazon bought Whole Foods, the prices came down because they were able to sell more because they, were, they sell online, they allow delivery now. So the prices have come down for everything, including the organics. Um, people say Whole Foods is so expensive. They actually, their prices came way down once Amazon bought them. And Amazon bought them, I believe, in 2018, I think it was. We were so excited. At first, we were a little nervous because we loved Whole Foods and we were worried that the quality might change but then immediately we were like this is the best thing ever because they have uh, Amazon delivery for Whole Foods which we utilize all the time as you guys know not as much now since it's barely available I was going to try and do it this morning but the next delivery window is tomorrow at 2pm I'm like yeah I'll try later <laughs> I don't need it that bad what will happen if you choose that one uh, if you check later, some of those other ones open up, it'd be sooner. But if you choose that, then you, that's the one we have. So I say, nah, forget it. I'll either not get one or, or tomorrow I'll try for a different one. But then sometimes you don't have it, so it's sometimes a risk, but I don't care. I, I didn't need the stuff that bad today. I can wait another day. for. Um, There's more like I, I just prep myself now because I used to. Now I have to like kind of prep because you, you don't know when you can get the things available. So when I go to the store, I have to buy a lot of meat and stuff or, you know, uh, keep checking the Amazon delivery to make sure we have a flow of stuff coming because we don't have a car. So it gets, and we don't have the funds to be um, running all over town to get stuff. Like I can take the bus for some things, but like the Whole Foods is like two buses um, and they take a long time. <laughs> They're not like, it's not quick. And you have to wait in between. So you have, um, it's a long trip. It ends up being four buses, but you have to wait about a half hour in between at each bus stop too. So it ends up being a really long trip on the bus to go to Whole Foods. <laughs> um, and so it's best if we can get delivery. But so I've been having with all this crazy shutdown, you know, to like really stay on top of it. It was so annoying. You're like, Ugh. But at least we have it. So thank you. But yeah, the prices came down. So if you guys are unaware, if you haven't shopped at Whole Foods in a long time, ever since Amazon took over, prices have come down. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you really should be if you're not, because I think it's only like $13 a month and you save fortunes. I mean, I, it's one of those things that you're like, why do you give us this for $13 a month? I mean, it's just, it's, it's astronomical all the time. I mean, you get the, you get the free next day delivery half the time. You get, um, the, the whole foods delivery for free. If it's, uh, with a minimum $35 order is all and it's free delivery. Um, you get like, uh, you get the. I think they have Amazon videos. I mean, you get all kinds of you get deals all the time at Whole Foods. They'll have just Amazon Prime things on sale for like, be like 40% off or something because Amazon Prime is really, you're like, geez. I mean, they give you so many. They'll give you deals all the time when you're buying things on Amazon. I'm like, I don't know why. If you're not an Amazon Prime member, you go spend $13, even if you're worried about money because you're going to save a fortune. It's one of those things I'm just like, it's amazing. I love Amazon. Uh, we do a lot of Amazon and eBay because we don't have a car. We used to, you know, get things from Walmart. But now if it's anything like big without a car, we just order it now, you know, because you're like, well, I'm not going to haul that on the bus. <laughs> Uh, where you used to would have thought you'd go pick it up in your car or something, you know, most things like, we're like, oh, order that online, and if it's something, if it can come within the next day or two, we don't go to the store. Now, so it's funny, we've been doing that for a while, but now more and more people are doing that as we have the shutdown, and I think people will probably start doing more delivery because they got used to it a little bit, not for everything, of course, when people go back to work, you can't do all those deliveries that come throughout the day, but um, the Amazon next day thing's great. But anyways, um, so, yeah, if you seriously are still feeding into all of this propaganda BS, then you're really um, not opening up your own mind because 
your feelings should be telling you that um, they they did this for political gain. And you say, well, why? Well, the Democrats want Trump out of office. They just tried to impeach him. Like I've said before, um, I'm not political. I do not vote. I will not vote. I never have. I never will. I was even in the Air Force, and I did not vote. I do not agree with the way we vote. I do not agree with our politics. I do not like our politicians. I was never going to vote for any one of them. The only one I probably would have considered voting for would have been Obama. <coughs> I still I still like him. But I didn't vote. Um... And Obama was just one of the coolest guys. I don't know. I, I, like, I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm not anything. Um, but I do agree with things like abortion. I think women have the right to choose. I agree with things that are where you have a, a right to choose for things always. Um, I am always for people having freedoms. That's what I'm for. So any of the uh, ones that start putting rules and regulations and laws and not allowing people to do things, I think anyone should be able to get married. I mean, any of the, all that stuff. You, um, you can be any sex you want to be. I truly believe everyone's bisexual. That's my personal stance, but people argue with me about that. I'm bisexual. I believe we all are and just are not admitting it, but y'all can have your opinions. But I am attracted to both men and women fully. Um, I actually find women to be more beautiful than men, but I um, am very highly attracted to men, and I, I like having sex with men. And I don't like just having sex with women, so I would never be fully lesbian because I actually really enjoy cock. Um, yeah, so I'll say that on here. And um, I, But I, I love women as well. And... I believe most people are probably more bisexual than they realize, and that's what causes for a lot of repression, because they go, oh, absolutely, am I not attracted to the same sex or opposite sex? Depending. Some people that are gay say that they could never be attracted to, um, like, a gay man may say, I could never be attracted to women. I find that hard to believe, because I believe that we're all beautiful, and I believe that we all can be attracted to each other, which would make you all kind of bisexual in the sense of you can be attracted. Now you can have preferences. Preferences are what we're talking about. 100% my preference is to be with a man uh, more than being with a woman. I don't want to be exclusive with a woman. That's just my preference. Um, some people's preference is to be uh, two men together. Some people's preference is to be two women together. Some people's preference is to be... Um, I would actually prefer to be poly is what I would actually prefer to be, is to have... Um, well, I am poly, but I mean to have the um, uh, a group, to have... Uh, we did have a girlfriend live with us for a while. It was me, Jairus, and, uh, and this girl, Cassie. That I really liked. She was just crazy. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it was fun, though. But um, that would be my ideal, to have uh, um, almost like I would like a uh, like a commune where you have a, a lot of people that everyone is probably hooking up and, you know, everyone's just a family and working together. If it was on a farm, it would be the best, and then you could grow organics. That would be my ideal utopia. Did you all ever see that show, Utopia? Oh, my gosh. There was this there was a flash in the pants. Um, this show, me and Jai Rich, we watched the thing. Every single thing we watched, it was, they decided to create, I forget what channel it was on. It was in, uh, gosh, I want to say 2014. I don't remember exactly. I don't remember what year. Somewhere somewhere between 2014 and 16, they had this show called Utopia. And what it was, they decided to have all of these people go live in this utopia, which was going to be just this farm. But, oh, the show turned into a nightmare. And it, and it ended up ending within, I forget how long, but it did not last. They did not last. They cut the show because everyone just started being so uptight and making so many rules. It was supposed to be fun. What happened, it was supposed to be fun. And the first night, they were all drinking, and one guy came on to another girl, and then she cried rape, and then it shut down the whole thing, which it was no rape. We saw everything was live. You could see everything was happening. The guy got a little drunk and, you know, being a little flirty, and she was fine with it, but then this other lady the next day, you know, how like the nanny patrol mom, he didn't rape her. He didn't even do anything. They didn't. It was all live. There was nothing you couldn't. They were, no one was having sex. Um, they were just all being flirty. And then the nanny patrol mom, her name was, um, God, was her name? She was so annoying, but it was so funny. She shut it down. Uh, she said, that was rape and blah, 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 blah. And were, I don't even know if it's rape, but, you know, sexual harassment, whatever. They, you know, whatever. The Me Too kind of stuff, everyone. So then the show became so lame. Because no one wanted to interact, and everyone was so greedy, and they didn't want to work together, and it was, it was just a disaster, so they ended up canceling the whole thing. <laughs> but if 
that one lady, Bella, was uh, I think her name was Bella, she hadn't been so nasty and so repressed. How fun could the show have been if everyone was just hanging out, having fun, being sexual? But she was the old lady. She was only, like, in her 40s, but acted like, you know how some ladies act like they're 80, even though they're only 40? Gosh, and she's like, and then she got all these women on her side, all these guys on her side, and everyone attacked this one guy, and it was just a mess. But um, that's what happened basically with the world it was supposed to be a utopia we did have a utopia they made a beautiful earth for us whoever made it uh you know people have different beliefs of who actually made it um but yeah so, so some god of some sense made the earth and it was supposed to be a utopia and then they put all of us on here and we started nanny patrolling each other and we started uh, <laughs> militarizing and policing each other. Just like the show. They couldn't even have a show on TV that people didn't do that. When they were, they were allowed to do anything basically on the show. I mean, it was pretty much open-ended at the beginning. They started making rules uh, to themselves. But the show only had very few things. They basically just said, you guys are going to be on here figure out they had uh, a certain amount of money, certain amount of supplies they were allotted each week, and so they had to figure out, you know, how to survive on that. But, but beyond that, they were allowed to pretty much do whatever they want. They could build things. They could, um, you know, farm. They could hang out. They could. They were even allowed alcohol, but they, it was in their budget, so they had to account for, you know, because it was in their food budget. So if they wanted alcohol, you know, that was in the food budget, and people wanted it, so they ordered it. You know, they would order their food, and... But they themselves ruined the show. And they had to cancel it because it got so stupid because they just started making it so boring because they're all policing each other and everyone fighting, not getting along and making all these rules when it was supposed to be utopia. And that's exactly what we did to the earth. And now we really did it with this virus. What in the world have we done to ourselves? And not really to ourselves as much as the government did to us, because most people are just following what the government did, but look at what they did to us. They shut down our economy for a normal flu virus. And I think it's an attempt to take Trump out because they first tried to impeach him. That didn't work out. And now we have that Ginsburg judge. If she dies and Trump gets to appoint another Supreme Court judge, or if another Republican gets to appoint a Supreme Court judge, the Democrats are very, very worried about that because that would be a very, very strong Republican control over the government um, because they'd have the Congress and the Supreme Court, the majority. So the Democrats are very, very interested about getting someone else Besides Trump and besides another Republican, they want a Democrat in office before she dies. Because once she dies, they get to appoint a new Supreme Court judge. You only get to support, appoint a Supreme Court judge when one of them dies. So it's a big deal. And she's very ill. Um, and they probably fear she might die if she gets this coronavirus, for sure. She's, um, I guess I had cancer. She's been in and out of remission, but she's been very ill. And so this is a very important presidency so they were willing to take any means they first tried to impeach him that didn't work they've tried to throw every democratic politician they have at him and they're all buffoons and no one likes them the democrats are so boring once they i mean the the only interesting democrat i have ever heard in the recent years was obama he was the best speaker, but the rest of them are bores. Hillary was a bore. And, and uh, <laughs> Bernie is the sweetest guy, but gosh, he's just out there. And then, oh, God, the, the Biden, what a nutball, that guy, and what a perv. He's just rubbing on everyone. They keep getting him kissing and rubbing on everyone. Touchy-feely man over there. And he's out there. So, and then I don't even know who else is running because I don't follow that stuff that much. Those are the only ones I've really heard about. Uh, I know there's like a hunt. There was like in the beginning, I think a bunch of them. Just like how when Trump was running, there was like a bunch of them running as Republicans. Now this year they did it where there was like a ton of de Democrats were running. Um, so they're all were trying to take down Trump. 
and it's not working because he's still looking at, looking like the best candidate compared to these other buffoons. And it's amazing because you're like, I don't know how you all can't find one person that could at least just people could like in the Democratic Party. I mean, they took Hillary was like one of the most hated women. <laughs> it was, people were voting for her just because they wanted a Democrat, but they're like, I don't like Hillary. That's the majority. There's some people that said, but that was a very small portion. Most were like, I'm only voting for her because I don't like Trump and I want to vote Democrat. Most people said that I don't like Hillary. It was like, why did they put her up against Trump? And now I don't know who they got, all these buffoons. And so no wonder... I mean, they can't be surprised if he wins again because they haven't put a good candidate since Obama. Um, and I don't at this point really care which way it goes. At first, I thought I didn't want Trump um, to be president again. That's why I thought, you know, earlier in the year um, because I didn't like what he'd done with China, these new taxes, and I didn't like that we um, uh, declared war on Iran and that I didn't like that he um, has been really hurting the environment with a lot of the regulations he took off. And he took off a lot of environmental regulations, and then they also amped up the coal production, which is really bad for environment. So I was really not happy about a lot of these things. But now we're seeing actually the environment has improved since we've had the shutdown. So that's one benefit because the lack of all the industries going and the cars and everything moving around and all the pollutants. So we've actually seen an improvement in the environment, which that's a really good bonus throughout this not so good time um but so there's been a lot of things i don't agree with what he has done i don't agree with the way he runs business when he thinks he can screw over the small guy and not pay workers um i think that is absolutely horrific i thought it was appalling that people voted for a president that thought it was okay to stiff workers um and to not pay taxes he also you know didn't pay taxes so all of these things i find appalling but at this point I find the Democrats, some of them, to be even more appalling of how they have destroyed the economy in an attempt to take out the Trump. The Trump. <laughs> the Trump. Um, and especially governors like Governor Sisolak and the governor in California and the governor in New York, who were the three biggest ones to really uh, take a stab at their own state. Um to really just make Trump look bad, like, oh, I'm going to take more precautionary measures than even the president said, and blah, 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 because he isn't taking it serious enough. But one thing Trump said it was a hoax from China, which he was right about that, because it was a hoax in the sense of the severity. They were saying, oh, it's so deadly, so deadly, but they wanted us to panic. And then all these politicians just jumped on the opportunity because they were already worried about what do we do to take down Trump. If you remember, we're voting this year. Those of you that do, I don't. But those of you that do, it's this year. So they are willing to do anything. We are on the final countdown, my friends, to the next election. You think they are not scared shitless that it's going to be Trump again, and then he's going to get another Supreme Court judge in his favor. Because she's probably going to die within his presidency if he gets another four years. They also are talking about that he wants to be a dictator, which I was telling you guys that before. That that's Trump's thing, that he wanted to become a dictator, and now they're using this coronavirus to say that he is becoming a dictator because he said that the president has ultimate authority or power, and they're all oh, dictator, dictator. Well, he's right in the sense of uh, he does, but the states are now all in violation, most of them by the, uh, the weed. So most people are not listening to the federal government. But technically, he could come in and raid all these states that are in violation. You know, he could use the military against people. So I would say he has quite a bit of power, y'all. Um, and they are scared that he actually is going to get so much power that if he gets another Supreme Court judge, he could change the term of being president. He could become president for life if he wanted to. If he got it passed, and if he had enough people on his side, he could get it passed. So that is why another reason why they're very scared. And I was already telling you guys that. And now today I saw the um, Democrats are all barking that Trump is trying to be a dictator. And that's what I told you guys a couple of days ago that that was what their concern was. And it's funny. So now it's just all they're just falling into exactly what I said they would do too. So it just now I know for sure it's political. Because what is like what does that have to do with the virus? I mean, if you're really worried about the virus, who, who cares if Trump said the president has all power? 
he kind of does in the sense of, yeah, you can be in violation of the president, but technically he could come in and stop that with the military. So I would say that's pretty much all power. (laughs) You know, these states can choose to do what they want, but technically the federal government can come in. And they did do that in the beginning with this weed thing. With We saw that in Colorado. They're not doing it as much, but they could. They could come in and raid the dispensaries. They can because they are in violation of the federal government. So I would say that's pretty powerful. Now, I'm not saying they're going to do that. And that would be dumb of them because uh, it's like 30-some states now in violation. It would be a real waste of time. And I think at that point the states would have a revolution but unless the people have a revolution the president does have power so the president has power as long as we give him power same with these governors have power as long as we give them power we don't have to the people are way stronger than the government but we just sign up to give away our rights day in and day out and we're so worried about getting a ticket or going to jail i've been in jail it's not that bad I actually found it pretty entertaining. I was there for 30 hours here in Vegas for my job, along with all the other girls. They arrested 20 of us that night. Um, and we were just chatting. They, they stuck us all in the same, like, the holding cell for 30 hours. We didn't, you know, go to any beds or anything. We just stayed in the holding cell. Um, and it's just, <laughs> that's your biggest concern, ever going to jail or prison? Man. There's worse things, I'm telling you. I was laughing, like, most of the time. We were just, you're allowed to talk. You're just hanging out. You're just hanging out on concrete, cold concrete. And I didn't eat because the food was terrible. I can't eat that food. So I got a little hungry. But that was the worst thing. It's uncomfortable, cold. But you're just sitting there talking with people. That's the worst thing that happened. And then, okay, if you actually go to jail or prison, that gets better because you get a bed. <laughs> yeah, you're in... Uh, isolation in the sense where you can't but who cares if that's what's stopping you from living your life is a fear of going to jail for something man because you just jailed yourself right now uh, in this own self-isolation thing because you're scared the government is telling you not go outside for one thing they haven't even made it illegal most places to go outside now they're lifting those if they have but people just did it themselves they jailed themselves like, nope, I ain't jailing myself. I've been in jail. Nah, they can jail me. I ain't going to jail myself. They ain't going to jail myself. I'm going to go outside. And people always, what are you doing outside? I've gone outside every single day since the shutdown. Are you kidding me? And I've gone, like, to the store somewhere every single day. Uh, I don't think there's been a day that I didn't go somewhere, at least to the gas station or to the front office or somewhere. I mean, there's not been a day that I didn't leave the house since the shutdown. I'm not going to stay indoors. Are you nuts? Are you kidding me? I go outside all the time. Heck, we got to feed the birds a couple times a day. I go out there just for that. Um, I take out my trash a million times a day. I I don't like trash. I take it out as soon as it gets a little bit full. (laughs) I... If it has, like, food items in it, um, because I don't want bugs. So I I end up up wasting some bags. I try to let it fill up a bunch, but once it gets, like, food, I don't don't let that sit. That's where you get bugs and get stinkiness in your house if you're letting your trash sit there with all the food in there. No, I take that all the time. But anyways, um, uh, I'm going to get off here soon. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, it's 6. I don't even know. How long have I been talking? Who knows? But I need to actually start cooking. So I was able to get some organic beef yesterday. Yes, that was great. So that's what I'm going to cook. We had some last night. It was so nice. Because the thing is, uh, the chicken and the, the fish just don't cut the mustard for us. Because we, since we eat only animal protein and a little bit of greens and garlic, you need, like, a substantial amount of protein. And... Um, Beef just does it for me better than the chicken. And then I also don't like that they feed the chicken all the corn and stuff. But, um, anyways, you guys, um, where's Jai Rich? Are you around? He sometimes is watching, but then he somehow falls asleep. Jai Rich? I fell asleep, so I'll probably just have to stop you guys. I'll just get I like to stop it where ah, my, my, my legs froze up. Oh, I can't feel them. <laughs>
down. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business. I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin'. This is not for you. I'm a jail, my deep with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the market, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. It's like I'm still a day, yo. And it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolex or Senko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out.